Kaiser and Richmond, you uh, represent New Orleans, a city that's very important to black history and, and culture. And now you serve uh, as a member of Congress in, for both that city and here in Washington, D.C., another city that's, that's integral to uh, black culture and history and, and identity. Do you see similarities between the two places? Well, in terms of the culture, uh, in terms of the people, yes. But in terms of the atmosphere, uh, no. Uh, my best way to describe it is people in D.C. Live, that, live so they can work. And people in New Orleans work so that they can live. And we enjoy, I think, our culture and our music and our food a lot more than the people in D.C., although they do have a lot of culture and food and they have the monuments and they have all these great, amazing places. It just seems that they get caught uh, in work so much. As opposed to Louisiana, we really enjoy our spare time, whether it's fishing or hunting or the fe many festivals that we have. We have everything from uh, the Catfish Festival to the Andouille Festival to the Gumbo Festival to the Jazz Festival, so Essence Festival. So we enjoy uh, our festivities and our festivals. So I think that's probably the biggest difference. But in terms of the people and the culture and the significance, a lot of similarities. You're the chairman of the Congressional mm -hmm. Black Caucus. Um, you have, you know, you know there is a long line you know, of African Americans dating back to the 19th century, although we had a bit of a drought in the mm -hmm. early 20th century to the mid. What are, who are some of the members of Congress who have come before you, who have inspired you in your service, you know, knowing that you, you, know, you have this place now in history as, as chairman you know, representing the, the interests of, of, uh, of black members of Congress? Uh, you can start with Shirley Chisholm. You can start with John Conyers, uh, who is the only member of Congress to will ever be able to say that he was endorsed by both Martin Luther King and Barack Obama. And uh, Charlie Rangel. Uh, and then you have to look at Jim Clyburn and Benny Thompson, who are newer members, but are very significant, as well as Marsha Fudge and the Maxine Waters of the world, who have given so much and have been fighting for so long. But the thing I admire about them the most is that they're still on the battlefield fighting. And then you have members like Eddie Bernice Johnson, who is just a class act, and you get to see her in all of her grace and passion. And it just reminds you that we've come a very long way, but we have the capacity and the energy to keep fighting for what's important to us. When you walk through the halls of Congress, you know, we we're surrounded by the artwork, uh, the sculptures, you know, the literature in the Library of Congress and so forth. What are some of the things that, that sort of speak to you as, as as representative of, of black history and culture? Well, just knowing that it's a place that's come so far, uh, whether we talk about its construction by slaves or we talk about the fact that this building uh, in all of its glory has created some very dark times for African Americans. And uh, as you look at the Supreme Court across the street and the Supreme Court that was in this building, it reaffirms some of the worst things that ever happened to African Americans, and then you walk by a uh, picture of Shirley Chisholm or Rosa Parks or Martin Luther King, and you see that it also holds uh, some of the images of our best and our progress that we've made. And then you just know that we still have, uh, unfortunately, a lot of work to do to even fulfill some of the promises from uh, Martin Luther King's day and Shirley Chisholm and others. You mentioned that slaves, you know, constructed the Capitol, and there's a there's a marker, I believe, in the, mm -hmm. the, the Capitol Visitor Center marking that. Uh, and then, you know, you flash forward a, a couple hundred years, and, and Barack Obama becomes a former president, lifts off in a military helicopter not far from Emancipation Hall. What was going through your mind on that day when when Barack Obama sort of left well, left the building, so to speak? That's one of the reasons why I wanted to be at the inauguration. Uh, a little bit of it is to say hello to the new guy for a lot of people, well, not for me. I was there strictly to say goodbye to the old guy and to thank the president for eight years of hard work, of grace, of class, and not embarrassing the country and increasing our standing around the world. And to see him uh, not far from Emancipation Hall uh, get in what would be Marine One and fly off uh, was very important. And it was an emotional moment um, because it reminds you that we can uh, achieve anything. But when you turn around and look the other way, uh, you know that we still have a lot of fighting that we're going to have to do. And 
Uh, it just gives you the comfort of knowing and what I think Black History Month is all about is teaching young people our past and celebrating our accomplishments. What it does, it gives them the knowledge to know that we can overcome any hurdle that we're faced with. So that's why it's so important to teach our young kids African American history so that they know when they're faced with challenges or mountains that they have the ability to climb it and the ability to overcome. That's what I think uh, to me is most important about Black History Month.